Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kahila or K and wow, it feels like I haven't filmed in so long because literally all of October, which it's still the beginning of October right now, October 10? Okay, so it's not the beginning. Whatever, we still have like three weeks left of the month, so I count this as the beginning still. Anyway, and I have all my videos like filmed and edited for the month so this isn't going to be coming out until like november which feels weird filming for like so far ahead but yeah also it feels great because now i can just relax and knit especially because i am knitting something new i'm used to knitting to knitting top down raglan stockinette sweaters but now I'm getting into the more complex knits. I mean, as I did starting with my Chunky Dahlia, which is the first lace work pattern sweater that I've knitted, pattern that I've followed. So after that, it like unlocked something in me that made me want to start knitting sweaters that seem complicated to me, like with complicated stitches or with charts and stuff like that. So when I saw Crea Bea coming out with her first sweater, I decided to knit it and try it out. So I bought some yarn and here I am trying something called the dip stitch for the first time. So I'm gonna put you guys like right here. That's not stable or straight. Hold on. Work with me, please. Okay, hold on, sorry. Boom! Oh, perfect. Okay, so materials and stuff. It's been a while since I filmed a project video. Okay, first of all, it comes with, what do I call it? A chart, basically. And Kalila made me a folder called Knit Pattern Charts because she made herself one. And so I was like, can you make me one? Because I plan on doing the Ingrid slipover and the Ingrid sweater and the Moby sweater. So I printed out all the charts for those sweaters plus the Cargill. So I have that in here. I'm going to be following that. And yeah, eee, I'm so excited. I actually need to put it right here. Boom. Anyway, so yeah, that's in here. I'll be following that for whenever I do need it. It's like a chart and glossary for her patterns and stuff in, oh, sorry, in the pattern. Did I say patterns and stuff in the pattern? Anyway, whatever, for all her abbreviations and stuff. And I'll be using these needles right here, my Takumi Clover needles. It's my bamboo set and like my favorite set of needles that I have. I have my liquid needles that I love, which... The Lincoln needles are right in front of me because I just finished knitting up the Sophie scarf. Also just finished the Monday sweater like yesterday. So yeah, I'm just like hopping right into another project. The Sophie scarf is like a, a nice little in-between project. Anyway, these needles right here. Oh, so pretty. People talk about the Scenic needles and I tried and felt the Scenic needles when I visited Alexandra in Sweden. But they feel just like my Takumi ones and they're cheaper. So if you guys want to save money and get a set that's literally just as great, if not better, then I would say get the Takumi Clover needles because they're great. Oh, and you know, it's hard to find a set where you get 16 inch cables because sometimes you have to, you know, buy those 16 inch cables separately. Like I have a whole separate 16 inch set because my other sets don't come with 16 inch cable. But this one comes with a 16 inch cable, 24 inch, 32 and 40. So you don't have to go anywhere else when you're working on your project. You can use these needles for every single size cable. 
Anyway, I'm gonna be using four millimeter, which is right here. And yeah, for the entirety of the project. Yeah, which I'm excited for. And now let's show you the yarn. Am I clear? Let's show you the yarn that I'll be using because I'm excited for that. Oh my gosh. So the yarn that I am working with goes together better than I would have thought. I thought it was going to be a nice, nice contrast because the pictures are a little deceiving. Okay, it's knitting for olives, so the pictures are a little deceiving. Sorry if I'm crooked this entire time. Oh well. But when I got it in the mail, they're like on the same spectrum. I don't know if it's going to translate on camera, but let me show you guys. You guys know I love knitting for olives. So here is, oh my God, this lighting keeps changing. Jesus. So this is what the yarn looks like. Ooh, that looks so good. Okay, this gray <laughs> kind of looks blue on camera. It is not even close to blue. Like it's a true gray, like truly gray. And then this this color basically translates the same. It is a nice dusty green, which it's called dusty sea green, and it's so pretty. And of course, this is the mohair. Whatever you guys saw it. And this one is called granite gray. And I don't know why it looks like a blue gray, but it is definitely not a blue gray. And together, this looks so good. I'm hoping when I knit it up, you can kind of see a lot of the contrast because that would be great. I love that. So yeah, so this right here, Knitting for Olive. You guys know I love Knitting for Olive, four millimeter needles. And yeah, I read through the pattern. There are some things that I probably have questions on, but I wanted to film my experience because this is like my first complicated sweater, knit sweater. And I'm like, I need to let you guys know when I'm frustrated. I need to just film the entire process so you can be here from start to finish, okay? So yeah, I'm very excited. Anyway, I think that's all I have for you guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started now. And then I'll let you know when I come to like something that I have questions on and what I do to resolve that in case you guys want to knit this pattern up as well. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> this is what I have so far and I love the colors. So there will not be much like difference at all with the colors. I think it's just gonna be like a green gray sweater, which is gonna be cool. But uh, let me tell you, I am annoyingly frustrated already only because there was something in the pattern that was so confusing for no reason at all because of the wording so if that one part was worded better I wouldn't have so many questions but I don't even want to say because it's a paid for pattern so you'll just have to get the pattern but literally in the beginning oh my gosh so now that I am no longer confused, I'm going to continue and hopefully the next part, which seems confusing as well, will not be confusing. But apparently after you join in around and stuff like that, everything is like seamless and cool and chill. So I'm excited for that part. But let's get through this frustratingly confusing part that should not be confusing. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm about to start on this next part which hopefully <laughs> this does not make sense i'm like okay i'm on a part where i have to start the dip stitch but i'm also like reading like the pattern as it explains like what i'm supposed to do at the same time while doing the dip stitch and like the stitches it, it doesn't add up so I'm just going to do what I think I'm supposed to do. And this, this might be the first project where I frog a lot. I like never frog my projects like at all. So this will probably be the first one because 
of how unnecessarily confusing it is. This is definitely not beginner friendly. And I know a lot of people are like, you just have to get through the beginning and then it gets easier. But if the beginning deters people, like some people might not want to get through this just to get to the easy part. I just feel like it could have been explained better. And I'm a person who literally reads patterns and would rather like just abbreviations and stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't know. There's just something about this that's just not explained correctly. So, yeah. Anyway, hopefully, as I knit, through, and I'm not even talking about the stitch, like, it's just uh, writing. Like, it looks simple, but it's not explaining the things that you need. And then I'm watching the videos that she provided as well and that doesn't even help like it's supposed to help with the beginning of the sweater but it doesn't even explain the most crucial part which is after the setup rounds it just skips until like you're done with that whole section so I'm like what was the point of that I don't know it was kind of pointless to be honest anyway my battery is dying so I'm just gonna start on this and hopefully I have something to show you guys Dude, I keep going back to Kalila because Kalila's on like row five or whatever, so she's done like, I'm on like row three and she's done that part already, but I keep going back to her because I keep getting confused because you're supposed to work the pattern while doing a raglan increases, but the increases get in the way of the pattern, so it's like, do you ignore the pattern while you're doing the increases or do the increases count? toward the pattern and stuff like that like that is what should have been explained in that video but it wasn't like what should have been shown like it's like the entire section of what I'm doing right now wasn't even shown in a video that's supposed to help it just skipped to row 11 and it's like it would have been great to see like how she worked the pattern with the raglan increases so then I'm not having so many questions because this is really, like, if I was a person that got, that, that got deterred easily, I would have stopped this pattern already. Because I've already done so much research for this, and I still have questions. But I'm pushing through because I like the way the sweater looks. And I want to get through it, so if someone else has questions, I can happily answer it for them. Because this is confusing. And this is also why I am filming it so if anyone has questions they can see that they're not alone and if I got through it you can get through it <sighs> so let's continue I have to update you guys again because I'm literally not even far into this I'm literally just on the next row and I'm just like what because the pattern tells us to do one thing but then I'm watching the video and she's telling us to remember something that we're supposed to just incorporate as we continue to knit. But if you don't watch the video, then you won't know to keep that in mind as you're knitting because it's not in the pattern. So I'm confused because it's like, is that something I was supposed to see in the pattern and I just missed it? Or is that something where like I have to watch this video to remember that because what the way she has a start the stitches uh, I can't even explain it because it's a paid for pattern so uh I can't even explain it to you guys but basically what is said in the video is not in the pattern which is confusing me because it's like did I miss something in a pattern? But I read the pattern and I'm literally looking at the pattern and that's not said, like written down or anything. So I'm just gonna continue. <laughs> and we're just gonna figure it out, I guess. It's been like four hours and I'm still on just row four. <laughs> this is what my, my thing looks like. Yeah, yeah. That's how confusing it is, but 
Oh, it's because I was talking to Kalila and she was saying she didn't struggle as much as me. She's still not done with it, okay? So she still has questions and stuff. But the reason I'm struggling more than she is is because I am like a literal person when it comes to pattern. Like, if you write down instructions, I'm going to follow your instructions to a T. So if you're adding things in like a separate thing, like a video that's not in a pattern, it's going to confuse me because I'm like, but it says right here, literally right here to do this. So why am I not doing this? So that's what's confusing. But instead of like strictly following the pattern to the T or whatever, I'm just reading my stitches and I'm just following the stitches and what makes sense like as for what I need to do next, which is what I learned from Kalila, because Kalila is I'm just following my stitches type of person, and I'm like I'm following the pattern type of person. So I'm slowly trying to be. Uh, I'm just gonna read my stitches and help let that help me get back on track. So honestly, I don't care what these first eleven rows look like. Like. You have to do like 11, 12 rows and or the 12th row you join in around and then just continue something like that. But I'm just like, I don't care what these first 11, 12 rows look like. It's going to be really cool to see like my progress, especially after I get over this little hurdle. And even if those first rows, those first like 11, 12 rows look bad, it's going to be funny because I'm going to knit this again. Okay. This sweater looks amazing. I'm gonna knit this again. It's gonna be funny when I knit it again after this experience because I'm gonna know a little more to see the differences between the two. Also, I know a lot of people knit swatches, but with these videos, Rebecca relies a lot on the swatches, like to tell you how the stitch forms and to look at it to help you out but it's like okay what about people who don't do swatches because I don't do swatches and I don't I shouldn't need to do a swatch to help me knit a sweater that's my opinion though so I'm sticking with it <laughs> but I shouldn't need to knit a swatch to understand how to work up a sweater and it's so crazy because the first like <laughs> has it been like 20 minutes I don't know how much I cut out but I've been filming for like the clips added together probably like 15 plus minutes and I haven't even knitted up the sweater yet so I'm probably gonna cut a lot out because <laughs> I did a lot of talking but I just want you guys to just be here and experience this with me which is why I film videos like this because some people don't use Ravelry like me so they're not gonna go through someone's notes to see what they said about the pattern plus there's only so much that you can type before it becomes paragraphs and people will just stop reading okay I would rather listen to someone explain in a long video with their progress and stuff than what then like read paragraphs and I'm a reader okay but also I love visuals and pictures just don't help me enough I don't know where I was going with that but anyway yeah that's my thought I'm just really glad I'm filming this so when I I can watch back, I can watch this video again and just see how I was during this entire process. <sighs> anyway, I have food coming so I'm gonna eat. It's currently 626 so I'm just gonna chill, eat, and honestly I'm gonna stay up to finish these 11-12 rows because I want to get through this <laughs> and I want to see because I think it's gonna be like Two, I think these 12, 11 rows are going to equal like two rows of dip stitches. Something like that. Yeah. So we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> it's not going to turn out that great. I'm telling you right now. But we're going to get through it. I'm not frogging it to make it look good because it's just part of the experience. And that's it. Yeah, I know I said I'm not frogging, but I'm frogging. Okay, I've learned... A lot as I continued knitting this up so I'm gonna frog it and start over oh my god you guys I've never frogged a project like this before this is so weird new experiences I'm filming the new experiences I'm gonna start again tomorrow bright and okay not bright and early I lied 
I'm probably gonna sleep in until like 7 a.m. I know to a lot of you guys sleeping in is not 7 a.m. because 7 a.m. is still early but I usually get out of bed at like 6 so I'm gonna sleep in until like 7 and then mm, I don't know I don't want to get started on it <laughs> right after waking up let's just say I might start by not oh you can't see me sorry I might start by 9 a.m. All right guys, hi, it's the next day. It's 9, 12 a.m. That's super bright. Okay, let's turn that down. Can you see this better? 9, 12 a.m. October 11th. And we're going into this with a positive outlook, okay? Now that I kind of have an idea of like how it's supposed to go and how I want to knit up this first part I think it'll be easier for me and if I have to frog again it won't be as frustrating because I've done it already it's just that initial starting off not knowing what you're getting into oh my god that's so frustrating and then it was like nighttime as i was trying to figure out more stuff and i'm just like oh my god i'm done but i don't care how many times i have to frog this project honestly because it's a beautiful sweater and i want to knit it up so we're gonna do this okay we're gonna get through it <sighs> and we're gonna do it okay look at all my yarn i mean that's not all of my yarn but a lot of it i just love looking at it it inspires me and so it is time to dive back into it. I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to start by rereading everything and re-watching the videos. I'm going to watch the videos a bajillion times, but it's nice to do it again from a better outlook and perspective and a fresh new day. And I'm also wearing my It's Not a Sweatshirt sweater that I made by knitting for Olive. My nails kind of match. I think that's all I have for you guys right now, so <sighs> let's get it. Okay, it's later in the afternoon and I didn't start when I last spoke to you guys, but I have started. And now I'm on row three where everything starts. So as I was knitting up these first two rows, I was seeing the pattern in the stitches and it's giving me hope because now I can read the stitches properly because I did it before and... Now I know what I'm doing. So now instead of like strictly following the dip stitch pattern, I'm just going to follow my stitches and do the dip stitch accordingly. Because if I strictly follow the dip stitch pattern, like the way the pattern is telling me, I'm not gonna be doing, I'm not gonna end up doing the dip stitch. It's gonna be some stupid thing because of the raglan increases. And literally, that's li that's the only thing that I need help with. Just seeing how to work the stitches, to work the stitch with incorporating the increases of the raglan. But that's not shown or written down anywhere to help. So I'm just gonna figure it out myself and follow my stitches. So it's later in the afternoon and I am exactly where I was yesterday except this actually looks like the stitch pattern so let me just show you a little bit of what it looks like no maybe because my face is in a way something like that so yeah It's looking like something. I'm going to continue with this one because it actually looks like the stitch pattern and like the stitches are lining up and stuff like that. The only thing I don't know 
what's happening in the beginning and the end of these rounds. <laughs> like, I don't start the pattern there. I start the pattern after my raglan. It's probably not right, but at this point, I don't care because everything else is besides the beginning and the end. I think I'm doing it correctly, even though, no, I'm probably not doing it correctly, the beginning and the end, because it's not in the pattern. But that's literally the only way that I'm able to get the pattern, like get it down in pattern. Because if I do it in the beginning, it doesn't make sense and it doesn't look like the pattern. Like it doesn't turn out like anything. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And yeah, we'll see how it ends up. All right, guys, I'm about to go to bed, but I wanted to show you guys my progress. So I finished the setup rose, which is, yeah, that was a journey. And I still don't even know if I did it correctly. And also, I have <laughs> way more stitches on my needles than I need. I'm pretty sure I probably accidentally skipped a step where I had to... No, I couldn't have skipped that step because I literally did it to complete the stitch. So never mind. I don't know how I have extra stitches, but listen, I'm going with it. This is going to be a super oversized sweater for me, and it is what it is. I'll buy more yarn if I need it. <laughs> so, because this is supposed to be a medium. When I count my stitches, the stitches... But it doesn't make sense because my stitches make sense. Like the beginning and end, I have the amount of stitches I'm supposed to have. And then it's just the middle where I have extra stitches. But the pattern lines up with the stitches. So I don't know how I have extra. Now that I'm talking about it out loud, I don't understand. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> if you only increased where you're supposed to increase and did the dip stitch where you're supposed to do the dip stitch. Yeah. Maybe it's the dip stitch. Maybe you have too many dip stitches. Yeah, but how did I create too many when those rows called for those dip stitches? Maybe I created too many because of the... But I have the exact amount in the beginning because I'm supposed to have 13 stitches in the beginning and the end. And I have 13 stitches. And then the middle is where everything... Hmm. I don't know. Either way, it, it looks how it's it looks like how it's supposed to look. So, as you can see, I am accomplishing the dip stitch, and it looks so cool. So I don't care if I don't have no, I don't care if I have too many stitches on here. I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna do the next step tomorrow, and it is what it is I'll just separate I'll keep doing my increases and then when it's time to like separate for like the sleeves and this and this and then that I'll just make sure it's equal and my body will be huge and I'll have a nice cozy textured sweater but yeah this is what I have so far and oh my god huge improvement from yesterday because I followed my stitches instead of following the pattern hey guys new day it is currently 8 a.m. 8.21 and I counted my stitches again, looked at the pattern and realized I have 24 more stitches than I'm supposed to and I don't understand why. I don't understand. It's like the middle section where I have extras but everything lines up. Like, I don't, I don't understand and I'm not frogging it because absolutely not. So I'm going to continue the pattern and this, like I said, is just going to be an oversized whatever. I'm going to try and make it line up when I add on some new stitches, when I cast on new stitches to join it around. And yeah, we'll see how it goes because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not starting this over. Okay. Actually, I decided I'm going to do one thing and just rip back this one row or like rip back the increases just to see like how many stitches I will have before those increases. Because I'm looking at her video 
And it looks like I'm like one row ahead of her or something. So, yeah. Actually, actually, I'm just asking somebody on Instagram how they did their beginning because I'm tired. I'm done. I need some clarification. Okay, guys, I'm frogging again. <laughs> so this is the second time, third time, I'm not sure. But I messaged two people on Instagram. They basically told me the same thing, but it actually helped me understand what I would need to do in like the beginning and end of the row and the round, which I can't explain because it's a paid for pattern. But the good thing is I understand. And it's literally just the beginning and the end that I needed to like understand basically because that is setting up for the pattern and if the foundation isn't correct, the rest won't be correct, which means the stitch won't come out looking like how it's supposed to look. So, I'm going to follow their advice. I basically did it correctly. I mean, minus the 24 extra stitches and the, the beginning and the end, which was clearly wrong. But everything in the middle was right. So, we're gonna do this again. Like I said, I don't care how many times I have to frog this, even though I said I wasn't going to frog it again, but now I'm going to frog it again because now I'm understanding even more. And it's fine. This part doesn't even take long. So, whew. We're going to try again. Wait, also the testers, the people I reached out to, they said the testers, like a lot of them just basically did their own thing just to make it work in the beginning so I'm not alone okay which is great <laughs> it's not me okay it's the pattern anyway I still wish I had a visual and there was more explanation in a video that's supposed to help about this specific section like row three like just I just need to know what I'm supposed to do in the beginning, how different alternatives, because the testers who I reached out to, the two testers, they gave me like two alternatives that I could do for the beginning that I don't even get from her in the video. So I'm like, dang, that would have been great. I wouldn't have frogged this a bajillion times or be as frustrated as I was before. I'm not frustrated anymore because this is honestly frogging is kind of therapeutic so <laughs> it's fine and also I know how to do the dip stitch so it's like it's just setting everything up now. So let's get through it. Once I have the amount of stitches that I need if it still doesn't like if the pattern doesn't really look like what it's supposed to look like I won't care because I'll have the amount of st stitches that I need and then I'll just take it from there new day guys the next night actually and I am back where I was yesterday and here we are looks better than yesterday's own I understand what I'm doing now because of literally like one or two things that the test knitters told me so I'm going to continue now and we'll just see how it goes. I literally told Khalilu what the test knitters told me and she's ahead of me and she's doing well. So I also have the same amount of stitches I had yesterday, which is a lot. But you know what? At this point, I'm not counting stitches anymore. This could be a nice oversized sweater for me or whatever. I don't care. I'm just going to I'm just going to knit. Hey, guys, it's the next day. Yes, I'm letting you guys know it's the next day so you guys know that I have been working on this project consecutively and not giving up, okay? But I have joined in the round. So let me just show you what it looks like and then finally we'll have some time lapses, okay? Like, I think we have like one time lapse so far because all I'm doing is talking right now. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. I can figure out which way this 
Nine guns. Jeez. Anyway, this is what I have so far. Let me turn it this way so I can stop capturing my thing. Hello, hello, let's get it together, please. Here we go. This is what I have so far, you know? It's not the prettiest, but it's getting there. And this is where I joined in the round. I'm gonna start like the dip stitch on this next row. And it, then it's gonna start growing. And then that's it. More increases for the raglan as usual. And yeah. That's basically it. So I have made it past the very extremely unnecessary, unnecessarily annoying part, which is great. And this yarn together, like where where is the green? Hmm? Where is the green? Can't even see. Where is it? Where is it? It just blends so well. I thought this would be more of a contrast. I mean, when I saw it in person, I kind of knew it wasn't going to be much of a contrast because of how well it blended together. But dang. Oh, I was expecting like a different color. Now it just looks like a gray sweater. And then in the sun, it'll probably have like a little green halo if you see it. But that's okay. I'll see you guys later. guys I don't know how long it's been but who cares I'm about to split for sleeves this is what my yep uh, uh. okay my needle stopper and my stitch marker anyway this is what my yoke looks like it's pretty it's a pretty small yoke than what I'm used to I'm a very tight knitter, so I think that definitely has something to do with it, especially since since, <laughs> since these stitches are textured and I haven't done a sweater that requires texture. Texture? Sorry, I'm using Tic Tacs, so I have a lot of saliva. Anyway, that requires texture, so once it blocks out, I, this thing is going to bloom beautifully. My raglan sections are horrible. You can't even tell it's raglan. Maybe. Yeah. It's so unaligned because of how I was struggling in the beginning. But guess what? From afar it looks good and that is all that matters. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm about to split for sleeves. But also, somehow I have basically the right amount of stitches that I need at this point. Remember in the beginning when I was struggling and I finished struggling but I was still kind of struggling a little bit and I had like 24 extra stitches or something like that. I don't know where those stitches went because I have the right amount of stitches that I need for the medium size that I'm knitting. I don't understand. I've literally only decreased when I needed to decrease and only increased when I needed to increase. I don't know. It's magic, okay? Like, just like I don't know how I got those extra 24 stitches when I was doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing. I don't know how this, is, how this happened, but you know what? <laughs> We're good at this point in these stitches. Like, oh, this texture, it looks so good. So I really do not care. I'm going to split for sleeves and then continue the body. Yeah. 
Does the collar done last? Oh, I'm not doing the collar last. Absolutely not. I'm going to do the body and then I'm going to do the collar and then I'll do the sleeves. To me, the sleeves should always be the ending because it's like, ha, huh, we're complete. I'm so used to doing the collar first with top down, so I'll do the collar second, but I think I always want to do my sleeves last. Stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away. Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? I wonder. Hey guys, just wanted to give you guys a little update. Okay, I don't remember the last time I updated you guys, but here we are. Let me show you what this looks like this looks so good i just showed it in a vlog that i'm filming so i've seen what it looks like on camera and i'm just like obsessed okay like look at this oh my gosh first of all it looks like it's supposed to be for like a toddler or something i swear i promise it's gonna fit me okay <laughs> but look at this oh this is so good look at it up close look at that stitch definition so squishy so nice and it's so much fun to knit up so all you have to do is get past that initial the initial like first 11 rounds and you're good I don't know if I explained this but I've talked about it with Kalila literally this pattern would have been so easy in the beginning if in the video that she came out with to like help us for the beginning if in that video one she actually showed you know when we would start the dip stitch but specifically like if she showed what she was talking about I think I can say this it's not giving anything away yeah it's just about the stitch so if she showed us where we're supposed to dip in a dip in a dip stitch whether we had two stitches or three stitches if she showed in the beginning like this is what I'm talking about when I say you can dip into the two stitches or you can dip into the three stitches, you know, whenever it comes up. If she showed that in the beginning, specifically for me, I would have understood what she was talking about. But because I didn't even know what the heck she was talking about, everything was confusing. And then also I didn't do a swatch because I don't swatch. And like I said, I shouldn't need a swatch to understand a pattern. So yeah literally if that one thing specifically was done i would have understood it but yeah that wasn't shown it was just breezed by it just passed up that entire thing anyway it's fun now so get through those 11 rounds and you will be fine it'll be fun so now i'm enjoying it i'm so glad i pushed through Oh my god, I'm so glad I pushed through that and it is now so enjoyable. Hello guys, I have finished, not fully finished the body, but I'm done with the body before the ribbing for the body. So I was just knitting, knitting, knitting. And then, okay, first of all, that looks so good. I realized, I'm like, wait, I don't want this to be oversized. I want it to be like, I don't care for it to be form fitting, but I don't want it to be oversized. I just want it to be like, in the middle so if I don't keep going it's not gonna drop all the way down to like crotch level long so yeah this is good so I'm gonna start on a ribbing right now for the body
I just finished filming a video, so I just finished filming a lot of content in general, and I'm just like, okay, where am I? What am I doing? I still need to film for this video. So, I don't think I showed you guys, but I finished the sleeve. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Boom. And then here is the sleeve so in the pattern she has us doing like some type of decreasing in the sleeve I'm pretty sure I don't remember but I'm pretty sure that we do some type of decreasing or we do some type of decreasing after the sleeve is finished like before the ribbing but I didn't follow the pattern I just did my own thing where I just knitted it straight and then did like a rapid decrease on one row before the ribbing and then I started the ribbing so bada boom bada bang this is what it looks like but oh my gosh look at this this is insane that I did this I'm wearing my Monday sweater by the way so pretty I'm like look at those stitches look at this collar also it looks so small well also it doesn't I'm so excited to block this, like for my stitches to just bloom and expand. But yeah, I just have one more sleeve left and then I'll be done, you guys. This has been such, it's so weird to call this a mindless knit because I'm used to calling sockinette sweaters mindless knits. But this has been such a mindless knit. Like I know the pattern of the dip stitch, so I don't have to look at anything. I can just, like, it's like my hands know what to do next so I don't have to think about it and it's so great I love it oh my gosh and I'm so excited to finish this sweater I'm so excited to wear it like I'm ready to wear it right now ah oh, yeah and I'm excited to start on my next project which you guys will know and see soon because I will be filming it because I like to film project videos okay these are fun because then I get to go back and see what I did, how I was feeling, and you know, someone else can see it as well and be like, wow, I had the same problem. So anyway, yeah, finished the sleeve. Now it's time to do the other sleeve. I haven't tried it on with the sleeve, but I don't care what the length of the sleeve is because I'm gonna block it and stretch it out anyway, so yeah. But right now I have to edit this podcast, so I'm gonna edit that and then I will start on this sleeve later today. Good morning, guys. We are on the last stretch, the last leg of this sweater. Let me put you guys down so you can see. Uh, working with here. <clears throat> Boom. So, sleeve done. Started the sleeve yesterday. I want to try to get to at least... I want to get halfway through the sleeve today, okay? So... This is my only focus. We're going to watch knitting vlogs and knitting podcasts that I've been loading up to watch. And yeah, what if I can get this done by tomorrow? That would be great. That would be... Mm, I'm not going to get it done by tomorrow because I have to do something tomorrow. So never mind. By Today's Friday, tomorrow Saturday. By... So tomorrow Saturday? I need to edit a video. Oh, God. Okay. Whatever. That's not priority. Mm. So probably by Sunday or Monday, we shall see. Okay, that just stretched to like three days.
finally reach the cuff of the second sleeve. When I tell you guys, sorry I'm watching Inga right now, I can't hear myself. When I tell you guys, I am so excited to finish this sweater. I'll explain everything at the end when I block it and this time hopefully fingers crossed I remember to actually film myself in the sweater for you guys while I talk about it okay <sighs> all right let's try to finish this cuff right now and then blocking let's go <sighs> it's done it's finished I'm done oh you guys I'm so excited. I just want to start knitting something else right now. I think I'm gonna crochet instead. And I'm gonna block uh I'm gonna block this tomorrow. Do I feel like squeezing out water tonight? You know what? Let's just do it. Let's just block it. Let's 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 get it done. Guys, here it is. And the sleeves, the sleeves, and like, like when I'm standing, it's like this, which is perfect because I didn't want, I wanted. <laughs> Now that I wear a watch, I like my watch to show, and it's so easy when the sweater just lands like right here, so it's perfect. So let's let's recap, okay? So I think somewhere during this video, after I passed a rough patch, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to knit the sweater again. After finishing it and like having like the finished product everything it's so beautiful like I love it it is so nice but then I thought do I want to go through what I went through in the beginning all over again because I know I will since I just winged it to get through it the, the first time like the, the time I got it right I just winged it like I didn't even do anything really according to the pattern I just followed my stitches based on the increases that were happening and then made it work that's basically it like whenever I saw like on a row when you're supposed to create the dip stitch like go in pull it up whatever I just made sure I had three stitches do 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 pearl knit pearl whatever 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 you're supposed to do at this point I'm not even trying to remember but yeah I don't think I'm gonna do it again because at least not anytime soon but honestly this not gonna do it again seems like like an actual I don't think I'm gonna do it again because I don't want to be frustrated going through this and I know I'm going to be because when I tell you this pattern was more frustrating than learning how to knit for the first time ever I just yeah that's all you guys saw me in the beginning but Beautiful pattern, the rest of the pattern, written perfectly. I can understand everything else. It was just the beginning, and it wasn't like it was even the dip stitch that was the problem, because the dip stitch is super easy, super easy. It's just the way the pattern was written for the beginning, or like the lack of description, and then in a the video, the lack of showing, basically, what we're supposed to do in the first 11 rounds, so. I think it was 11 rounds so anyway this pattern is nice if you want to challenge yourself and try to get through the first 11 rounds or rows because I think it's knit, knitted flat first go ahead be my guest I wouldn't suggest this pattern for a beginner though at all even though it is easy I would definitely would not recommend this to a beginner you will want to quit knitting if I recommended this pattern to you so learn how to knit sweaters first and then once you're comfortable with that, you'll be able to wing this the way you want to. But hey, the finished product is beautiful and I'm just glad I have my own version of this sweater. And yeah, so if you have any questions, let me know down below. I will try my best to help you guys if you are struggling. Because like I said, I had to reach out to testers and they literally said they just winged it. Like, 
<laughs> which literally like it helped me because I was able to start thinking outside of the pattern but it really didn't help anything and for people who are like I want to follow the pattern straight I don't want to try to think outside the box that's me I like to follow the pattern you tell me to do something I'm gonna do it like unless it's like a length of a sleeve or ribbing or whatever I'm like okay I can do my own thing there but when it comes to stuff like this where it's like I don't really know what I'm doing I want to follow your pattern to understand and not wing it myself so if I have to wing it in a pattern that's supposed to tell me what to do I'm just like bruh anyway like I said let me know if you have any questions okay but that's gonna be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching let me know what you worked on while watching this video also let me know if you have decided to work on this sweater how's it going for you was it easy for you to understand in the beginning don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell because it will notify you guys whenever I post another video also don't forget to follow me on Instagram because that's where you'll see any pictures of my projects like this one updates on my yarn and projects and I'll see you guys in the next one.